Hello, my name is Raúl Estevez from the University of Barcelona. Uh, our group is working, trying to understand the mechanisms involved in the regulation of the water content in the brain. This function in this process leads to edema, and edema is a final common path of several neurological disorders, such as uh, brain cancer, stroke. To study this problem, our group has focused in a very rare disease that is called megalencephalic leukoencephalopathy with cortical cyst that leads to water accumulation in the patient. MLC disease uh, was identified in the 90s by the group of Marjo van der Nap in Amsterdam. There are two types of MLC disease. Uh, the classical form is characterized by the presence of cysts in specific areas of the brain. Um, patients, uh, the, the, the phenotype of the MRI uh, becomes worse when patients become older. In contrast, the type MLC2B is the other way around. So patients, the phenotype of the MRI becomes uh, uh, lower when patients become older. And there are two genes that cause uh, MLC disease. Our group has identified, in collaboration with the group of Andernap, that mutations in MLC1 cause 75% of the patients, and mutations in Glialcam are found in the rest of the patients. So mutations in MLC1 leads to the type MLC1 type, and mutations in Glialcam leads to the MLC2 type A and type B. After discovery, uh, this, after discovering the Glialcam uh, gene, we look for in what types of cells in the brain was glialcan present. And we found that glialcan was present in astrocytes and oligodendrocytes. However, MLC1 is not present in oligodendrocytes, suggesting that glialcan may be associated with other proteins in these other cell types. Then, in collaboration uh, with the Logofarm company, we look for glialcan associated proteins by affinity purification and mass spectroscopy. In this way, we could identify, of course, glial can and MLC1, but also we could see peptides corresponding to the CLC2 chloride channel. Hi, I'm Tania Lopez, one of the main authors of this paper. After the Logofarm results, we wanted to verify if there was a direct interaction between glial can and CLC2. We obtained a positive result through co-IP experiment and split-test protein complementation assays. Since, since glialcam had been described to target MLC1 to cell junction, we assayed if glialcam could also modify the localization of CLC2. When CLC2 was transfected alone, it was detected at the plasma membrane and intracellularly. However, co-expression with glialcam directed the CLC2 channel to cell-cell contact. After, we asked if, uh, if glialcan could modify the CLC2 function. For this purpose, we collaborated with the Michael Pusch group from Italy. Hello, my name is Michael Pusch from the Institute of Biophysics in Genoa, Italy. Here in Genoa, we have done most of the electrophysiological experiments with CLC2 and glialcan. The CLC2 channel can be expressed, for example, in xenopus oocytes, and uh, as can be seen in this current trace, it activates very slowly at the negative membrane potential of minus 140 millivolts, and then decays again back to a smaller value at plus 60 millivolts. Uh, in the brain, the CLC2 is expressed in neurons as well as in glial cells, and in glial cells, it, inter it interacts with the gliacan protein. To test the functional impact of this interaction on CLC2, we expressed both proteins simultaneously in oocytes initially, and the result was impressive. The currents were dramatically increased, and they also have lost the time dependence and the voltage dependence. Hi, I'm Gianni Zifarelli, and when I started this project in 2009, we knew that this interaction had to be physiologically relevant. However, it took another two years before we could really work out the details. To confirm our impressive results in the oocyte system, I performed also whole cell patch clamp experiments in human embryonic kidney cells. We co-expressed Gliacam with a GFP coupled CLC2 and observed a similar modulation of the currents as in the oocyte system. And in addition, we saw a strong clustering of the CLC2 fluorescence at cell contacts. We also wanted to see whether Gliacam was able to modify CLC2 endogenous currents in rat astrocytes. For this purpose, we infected these astrocytes with adenovirus expressing glialcan GFP and measured CLC2 currents through patch clamp. 
We could also see that glial cam modifies the functional properties of the CLC2 endogenous covering from astrocytes. All four tested MLC causing mutations of glial cam disturb the CLC2 clustering at the cell contacts. Thus we think that the precise localization of CLC2 is important in glial cells. In this way, in primary culture of rat astrocytes, this mutant leads to an intracellular staining of CLC2. Abolicin is targeting to astrocyte junctions. So we believe that the discovery of glial cam as a subunit of the CLC2 coral channel will be very useful to understand the role of CLC2 in glial cells, to think in finding new therapies for MLC patients and, in general, for patients affected with edema in the brain. So thank you very much for listening and thank you also for the funding agencies that support our work.